We want every child to seize every opportunity that education and life can give them. We understand that you know, literacy and numeracy are, are critical and we want all of our children to be literate and numerate by the time they leave. But I think the crux of the work we do um, are all the um, other things that we do, like the experiential learning, like the first-hand experiences that really give the children something to write about, something to talk about. From first-hand experience, which I think is vital for children, they can explore and create and begin to extend their vocabulary across all subject areas. We need to look and recognise that we evaluate, we share, we discuss ways of working in many different forms and to use the video we can actually allow children to watch themselves, to evaluate their own learning like they do with their literacy book and their numeracy book. And I think that's vital, allowing children to recognise learning and knowledge in some subject areas can be transferred and it's those transferable links that we're looking to enhance. in school to make our work more exciting. Working with our artists in residence, we've explored ways of engaging children in a cross-curricular approach with literacy and dance. In year four in particular, we're exploring the ways of extending sentence writing using verbs and adjectives. I go to the park, I like to kick. Children have taken ownership of the collection of evidence within the dance lesson. These images are beamed onto the interactive whiteboard back in the classroom to evaluate their work and reference their movements with sentence construction within the literacy lesson. Through first-hand experience within the dance lesson, children can explore their word vocabulary and in particular the use of the verb and comma within the sentence in a medium which offers success at many different levels for all children. Daniel, have a listen to me sentence. Me and my friend were sitting on a bench and we were drawing. What do you think the two verbs are? Is it sitting and drawing? Yeah, that's right. Do you know if you take apples that way, you could put and swinging? Yeah, that's a good idea. Um. <laughs> Using the cross-curricular approach of dance and literacy, children develop their sentence structure skills in a collaborative approach using observation to identify the comma, shown as stillness, and their individual interpretation of verbs through movements. This exploration of words is captured once back in the classroom. Video of our work is used as a stimulus to generate the creation of extended sentences and through individual first-hand experience, children have the ability to share, create 
and work towards meeting their literacy targets. Can I have a listen to the sentence? We went to the park and we hid in a ditch while my friend rummaged. Yeah, that's good, but you could put and weeks. It's a good idea, that. When we go to the park, we like to kick, run, jump and climb. Andrea, you've also been involved in the dance yeah. project. How do you ensure that there's a cross-curricular link between dance and some of the other subjects? I think when we're planning, we, we look in particular for any opportunities where we can fit movement into the objectives that we're teaching. Um, a particular example would be a recent science topic we taught on solids, liquids and gases. Um, and we, our starting point was really looking at vocabulary and thinking about the words that the children would need to know and understand. Um, and we went into the school hall during a dance session and took those words in with us. And we then handed it over to the children and said, you know, show me or interpret what the word evaporation means, condensation. And they created their own movements to try and, and show us what they thought that meant. Um, and it's amazing some of the different responses we get from them. It's, it's fascinating. Every time I teach a dance lesson, you see these different approaches that I would never have come up with. And I think that's what's been so exciting about this, this whole project, just seeing how the children have responded to, to the new opportunities. OK, can I see what mountain looks like? from here into Boulder without just standing up and moving roughly. So you can do it, use speed to do it, so you can move slowly. You can do that. You can sit here. You can sit and then you can rise together. Or you could then. Okay. Well, you can still get to that big boulder position. I just want to wonder how you're going to move your bodies together to get to that place. So that's the problem for you to solve, okay? So, Margarita, transferable mm -hmm. skills, enjoyment, fun, learning how would you well, that's sum what, that up that, that's what education is all about isn't it transferable skills education has to be fun but ultimately the children have to learn the basic skills but having observed for example one of chris's lessons um it is something very new for us but it is something very very successful i mean there was a lovely moment last week where the children were hiding, was one of the verbs, and there was a little lad, and it was in the park, was hiding um, behind the curtains, and he would have stayed there the whole period. And when you see children losing all inhibitions and really buying into something that is so totally different, you know that it's working in school. I think what embeds the knowledge and the learning is the excitement and the happy times that children immerse themselves in and I think that makes it easier for them to remember and use back in the classroom. It's not specifically geared towards more able children or the less mm -hmm. able children or the children that have difficulty speaking and listening. You can observe differences throughout the ability range which is which is very exciting and, and very important for a class teacher. Could part of the success though be the fact that you've been at the same starting point as the children and you've yeah. maybe had the same yeah. perception as the children mm -hmm. so you've had to some degree empathy with them and you've learnt with them mm -hmm. along the way and now your idea with regard to dance has changed mm -hmm. the same as their mm -hmm. ideas regarding dance yeah. have changed. Yeah, I didn't think of that. I think yeah, that's a real, um, really interesting think, point. Yeah, I agree. Uh -huh. um, and I mean, I have always been involved in dance. Um, you know, it's something I've always been interested in and, and PE. But certainly my approach has completely changed as well. I would never have probably been brave enough to work with it in a cross-curricular way. And I think that's, that's really opened up some doors for us.
Brilliant. Well done. Very good. Round of applause for the OK. I spotted, you know, where at the end where, like, Bethany was over Peter and then they were at the bridge. I thought that really interesting. So the different parts they made with yeah. that lower part and the top part. What was it? The uh, mountain. It was a mountain, yes. I think it was a mountain. Was that a mountain? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the bit where Pete was under, that made like the mountain a bit rocky. Yeah. Oh, the rock underneath the mountain and the peak on top. Brilliant. So are the transferable skills, Andrea, to do with emotional attitudes towards learning? Or is there more about the skill to do with literacy, for example? I think it's a bit of a balance. Um, I think children won't, particularly in our school, I think some children wouldn't buy into literacy if it didn't have some element of fun and excitement and motivation. And I think we, as a staff, try to plan every unit of work with some element of excitement. You know, we try and incorporate drama, speaking and listening, um, and now we're really into sort of movement and I think that's that's something that we just have found that gives us success. I think what Andrea was talking about, the transferable skills, is, is really important and very exciting in light of the new primary frameworks, the literacy and the mm -hmm. numeracy, mm -hmm. and being given now the freedom with QCE to actually have a creative curriculum and, and adapt and, and plan in a way that may be quite specific to our school and in doing so actually meeting the needs of the children that we teach. And I think it's really a real exciting future. What do you think are the implications for teachers in terms of teaching and learning? To continue to use dance as a, a valuable resource, but also to continue looking for the next spur, the next catalyst, the next thing that we're going to use that would have the same success and the same impact. When the children weren't in dance in the hall, which is a vast space, I was trying to capture all the children on video, and some of the children weren't in groups or in pairs, were moving over a vast area, and there were some children occasionally who I was losing out of shot. Especially if you've got an activity that's repeated, you can just film it several times. If you've got just one camera, and the first time you'd film it, a really big shot of the whole hall, yes. with everyone in, and then the second time, you'd pick on an individual group and you could do each group that way. So that we, we could put these, these shots together yeah. and then, then they'd work together as a piece and you'd be able to get each of the groups to see the detail that, that you, that's really important for you to show them. It's not measurable on a graph, but it's measurable by the way the children behave, they're very confident, they're very social beings, they're not really phased by anything, and that for us is the measure. 